Right, today we're just um, going to go over the 265 block, uh, checking the threads, checking for anything that needs cleaning up. Uh, needs a bit of deburring and some holes countersinking. I'll also run a tap through every single thread on the block to make sure they're all clean and um, ready for assembly. So let's do it. Just chamfered the head bolt holes. That's simply to stop um, the start of the thread breaking away. Obviously done all of them. I've done the push rod holes as well. It's just because they had, because it's been decked, it had a, um, a bit of a burr there. So we'll get rid of those. And also it does have, It does have a chamfer in the bore, but it had on one half, it had a little fuzzy section where the machine had um, caused some little, minor little burrs. So I've just deburred those as well. Right, now I've got to find my taps and clean all these threads out. Got my 716 UNC tap to run through the head bolt holes. UNC stands for Unified National Course. Course as in the thread pitch. Threads all nicely cleaned out. These Hemis um, struggle with oil leaking out of this side cover. Everyone I've owned um, has leaked oil out the back here. Now, they do have oil drains there which is actually higher than the bottom, same as that one. There's a little drain there. I've uh, countersunk the top of that. I've countersunk the top of that one. There's no drain hole in the middle here because there's a cam bearing underneath that. Um, so I've chamfered that out as well because that had a little wall around it 
And where are we? One there. Chamfered that hole and cleaned that one up as well. Just to get the oil away from the side cover. It's, um, it'll help in uh, the long run though. It'll probably still weep a bit of oil, but we tried our best. Also cleaned up the, where the oil goes into the filter and in the back of the hole there, there was a, a real sketchy bit where the two drills met when the block was drilled. So we've cleaned that up for a bit of smooth flow, smooth airflow, I should say. I was also cleaning up inside of the fuel pump hole there, or mount, and noticed that the fuel pump arm had been bashing into the top of the block there, so I think I'll relieve that a little bit so it doesn't happen again. Surely that would have been knocking and carrying on. So we'll clean that up now. We've cleaned the roof of that fuel pump section up. So it hasn't got that big chunky mark on it. Took a little bit more out so it doesn't happen again. Now I'm just gonna recommend you know how you can buy those big tap and die kits? You know, and they can be three, four, five hundred dollars. And you end up only using six taps out of them and you lose them anyway. So then you've got a box of taps you don't even use. Just go and buy individual ones that you'll use. Uh, these, these are nearly double in price now. I've had these a long time. I've had these probably over 10 years, so. Um, you know, if you pay 15 bucks for a tap, it's better than paying hundreds of dollars for a kit that you'll, you know, only use a third of, or probably less. Now, I just want to show a bit of a design flaw. It actually happens in the Australian Falcons as well. Now this, Obviously there's water pump bolts on here. And this lower bolt here, if you put the wrong bolt in there, you're gonna wind that straight, straight into the cylinder wall and punch a hole inside of there. I've seen it done, so just be careful. It's normally only, I think that one's a blind hole, but this one here will punch straight through. That one will miss. That one's a blind hole. And the rest are fine, so just a bit of a tip there. All the threads are tapped and checked. All come up good, no worries. Um, I will go back over everything and just double check that I haven't missed something. Then I'll remove the caps, number their bearings, so they go back to where they are as the machine shop set them up. And then that block will get washed. Um, I've just got to check to make sure I've got the rear main seal because I don't want to wash it until I've got the seal because once I wash it and dry it, I want to put the crank in and so on, you know. 
Right, now, just back to these taps. Um, there's normally three sorts of taps. You can buy them in a kit of three. Um, you've got the pointy one, which is normally when you starting a tap or a thread from a fresh hole. Uh, then you have the intermediate. And then what I've always called, or been told, is called a plug tap, which is square. So, theoretically, you'd use this to start a brand new hole, thread, and then you follow up with the second one, and then follow with the plug. Um, if you're tapping a thread in something, a thread in something that is goes straight through, and there's nothing behind, you'll be able to use just this tap. If you're tapping a thread into a blind hole, which has a, a blind hole is when you drill a hole and it's just solid metal, solid metal. You'd run the starter tap intermediate and then the plug tap, which would get right down in the base, in the corners. Hopefully, yeah. Uh, hopefully that made sense. Right, I think I'll leave it at this this video. I'll try to keep it short. Um, that can drag out for an hour if you if you don't edit it properly. Gasket gasket kit's turned up. I still got to open that and see if there's a rear main in there. I did find my cam gear that I lost. And I've cross-referenced the part number and it's right. It's the right one for that crow cam. It's actually crow gear, so. Mint, we can, we can start putting this thing together, hopefully, over the next few weeks. So I'll leave it there. Um, thanks again for tuning in. I'll try to keep uh, a video a week, it'd be nice, but as I said before, it is what it is. So, all right, we'll leave it at that. Cheers. Right, so I've got my 716 UNF tap. Fucking right.